Hello, in this video I am going to solve a problem on trigonometry for you, on the topic of trigonometric equations. So let me first the problem for you. What is the set of all solutions of the equation tangent of pi over 3 multiplied by cosine 2 pi x equals to square root of 3? That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do everything correctly, the answer you will get at the end is the set of all integers z. Let us now start solving the problem. Uh, okay. So this is the problem that we are supposed to solve. Tangent of pi over 3 times cosine 2 pi x equals to square root of 3. What is important here is to note that the whole expression that you see here plays the role of the argument or the angle in front of tangent. Okay? So this means that you put a number x here, for example, you calculate cosine of this combination, it becomes a number and then you multiply that number by pi over 3, it becomes another number in radians, and then you calculate the tangent of that particular number in radians. It is, you have to fine-tune this x so that the final answer becomes a square root of 3. So that's what I want you to understand, that this pi over 3 times cosine 2 pi x as a whole plays the role of the angle in front of tangent. Okay, if you want to solve that equation, so I just remind you about what uh, we should, in principle, know about trigonometric equations. There are two, of form the two formulas that are important for us in this problem. One, pro one formula is this. We already know about that. If you have tangent of a, a box, anything inside the box which is unknown, is equal to a number k, now we know that what is inside the box is equal to tangent inverse of that a number plus an integer multiple of pi, so n pi, yes? So here n is an integer. And then we also know that if cosine of a box, yes, if, if cosine of an unknown expression, an unknown number is equal to k, then what is inside that box should be equal to plus or minus cosine inverse of that number, but plus 2n pi. Here we have any multiple of pi acceptable, but here we should have only even multiples of pi. Again, n is an integer. So these are the formulas that we will need uh, during the solution to this problem. So here the first thing comes to mind is I want to use the first formula here on top, yes, and I want to give the role of a square root of 3 to this k, and I want to give the role of this expression inside tangent to this first box on top, yes? So, this is the idea. So, you assume that this is your box, and then this is your k value. Okay, so according to that uh, relation, what is inside the box here means pi over 3 times cosine 2 pi x is equal to tangent inverse of that number, yes, tangent inverse of this number k, and then plus n, an integer, multiplied by pi. Okay, I emphasize again here that n is an integer. So I'm using this symbol, z is the set of all integers, and n, this symbol means belongs to the set of all integers, or in other words, n is an integer, yes? Okay, but this square root of 3 is a famous number. Tangent inverse of a square root of 3 is nothing except pi over 3. Okay, so this becomes pi over 3, I just copy and paste the first part, 2 pi x e equal to pi over 3 plus n times pi. Okay, so you know that the goal of your equation is to find x, so you have to make x alone on one side of this equation. Motivated by that, first of all, I want to get rid of this factor of pi over 3. So what I do, I multiply everything on both sides, 
by the reciprocal of this number, meaning 3 over pi. So if I multiply everything by 3 over pi, this will be cancelled, and I will get cosine 2 pi x. If I multiply this by 3 over pi, this becomes 1, because they are reciprocal to each other. And if you want, I can just do it here. If I multiply the last term n pi by 3 over pi, then this pi and that pi are cancelled, and I get 3 times n. So the, answer, the next one is 3 times n. And remember, n is an integer. Okay, so there is a delicate point here. Uh, of course, I want to use the second formula, that is clear. I want to give the role of the box this time to 2 pi x, and I want to give the role of that k here to this combination 1 plus 3n. But the point is that there is a delicate point here that you have to be careful about, and that is you know that cosine cannot actually attain all possible values. Cosine is maximally 1 and minimally minus 1. So this means that this number, if it is larger than 1 or less than minus 1, will not give rise to any solutions to this equation because it's impossible to have cosine beyond 1 or minus 1. So this means that in order to have any solution for a solution for this equation, this 1 plus 3n should be maximally 1 and minimally minus 1 on the one hand. On the other hand, we know that n is an integer. Okay, so let us see how many of these numbers are acceptable. Okay, so I add minus 1 to all sides of these inequalities because I want to make n alone. So then this becomes minus 2, less than or equal. This becomes 3n. And if I add minus 1 to here, it becomes 0. And I divide everything by 3, so it becomes minus 2 thirds is less than or equal to n is less than or equal to 0. Okay. On the other hand, I know that n is an integer, so there is only one integer satisfying the, this condition, yes? And that is n equals to 0. So this means that immediately I realize that n is 0, because n is an integer. Okay, so this means that I am really not interested in solving an equation except possibly, except one value for n, and that is n equal to zero. Okay, now that n is equal to zero, this equation becomes simpler. But the equation becomes just simply 2 cosine 2 pi x equals to 1. Okay, and then what happens, I can use the second formula here. And I give the role of the box now to this guy, and then the role of k to this one. And then I would write this 2 pi x is equal to plus or minus cosine inverse of 1 plus an even multiple of pi. Because I have already reserved letter n here, so if you don't mind, let me just change my letter to m, for example. Here, m belongs to z. Okay, and then what happens, hopefully you know that cosine inverse of 1 is 0 radians or yes, or 0 degrees, it doesn't matter here, but we are working in radians, so that is just 0, and plus minus 0 is just 0. So what is left for me is that 2 pi x is 2 m pi. But my goal is to make x alone, so I divide everything by 2 pi. So then it becomes x equals to 2 and pi are gone when I divide it, then it becomes x equals to m. But what is m? m is an integer. So we succeeded to solve the problem and find x. What did we get? We got this result. Every integer m, no matter what that is, is a solution to this trigonometric equation. So then it means that the set of all possible solutions is nothing except the set of all integers, yes? So that is the solution of this problem. It might be a good idea to see if uh, GeoGebra understands how to solve this problem. Yes, because this one is probably a little bit critical when it comes to applications and computers. Let us see uh, how GeoGebra will act in this problem, okay? 
Uh, okay. So here uh, I go to cast view. So let me just a switch, uh, we don't need the graphics view, so okay. And I will try to type this equation in, so I will say solve, yes, uh, solve equation in x, and then I will type my equation, which is just tangent, uh, and then I would write pi over 3, and then I go in front of it, so I use multiplication sign, it doesn't hurt, so I would say cosine and then I would say 2 pi, uh, 2 pi, and then multiplication by x, and then equals to square root of 3. Okay, so let us see if I have done it right. Uh, okay, so what you see that you GeoGebra actually it provides you with some answer, which is of course not completely wrong. But GeoGebra is actually considering 3n plus 1 here. Okay, so it's solving it for all possible values. And then of course, of course, you see here if I have 2k1 pi divided by 2 pi, I will get k1. But this part is 0. GeoGebra doesn't recognize that this is 0. So correctly, GeoGebra is using two different letters. So this k sub 2 that you see here is the n that I used in my solution. And k sub 1 here is the m that I used in my solution. Yes. But anyway, this is not probably an acceptable solution. The one that we solved here is actually the correct answer. We can also check that how alpha Wolfram will answer this. That's also in interesting to compare these applications okay okay now here i try to type the equation but this wolfram alpha language is based on mathematica i have a little bit familiarity with that so let me just type this equation like this okay so solve and then uh, i would type my equation which was tangent uh, but of course alpha wolfram alpha is based on AI, so hopefully, even if I am not following exact syntax of Mathematica, this will understand what the problem is. By the way, we can also test that. So tangent of uh, pi, so let me write pi over 3, and then let me put the multiplication here, and then I have cosine uh, of 2 pi multiplication x, and then Outside that, I will have equals to SQRT, yeah, 3, for example. Okay, let us see how it goes. Uh, and then here, I have to be careful. Yes, yeah, instead of this one, I make it square brackets. And then what happens here? I have another square brackets. No, yeah, that's correct. Okay, let us see what the answer is here. Okay, so actually you see that uh, Wolfram Alpha not only answers this in the set of complex numbers, yes, uh, but also understands that the solution is just simply uh, real solutions. You see, it has written results here, no more explanations, it's mentioned that C1 and C2 belongs to Z, but of course you know that in complex numbers this is possible that cosine is actually goes above 1 or below minus 1. So this can happen in the realm of complex numbers. So now you see that it is mentioned that the real solution, if you are interested only in real solutions, x is equal to C sub 1. What is C sub 1? C sub 1 is just an integer. So GeoGeb actually Wolfram Alpha realizes that the solution is this one. Okay, I think that was also interesting to compare the results of the applications. Okay, I hope that the video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.